Hello and welcome to the third video in a mini-series introducing adaptive music in FMOD Studio. This video series is designed to get you up and running with logic operations and adaptive music in FMOD Studio. My name is Sally and I'm the sound designer at Firelight Technologies. Today we're going to have a look at upgrading our simple adaptive music system with a new game parameter and use it to skip between different sections of music. This will help FMOD Studio newcomers to level up their knowledge of adaptive audio for games and help refresh FMOD Pros on some of the FMOD features. We will delve a little deeper into the world of adaptive audio and see how we can use game parameters to control conditional triggering logic and transitions. I will introduce you to the trigger conditions and quantization features of regions, as well as how we can use parameters to control the position of the playhead. Let's have a look at what we'd like the music to do by the end of this video. The first thing that we will do is we will create a new intensity parameter and we'll do this first because all the logic that we will be crafting today is based off this parameter. We'll actually create a higher intensity loop as well and we'll add logic operations to loop regions so that the playhead will pass onwards past the loop region only if the condition for intensity is met. For example, we'll start with the intensity high and the playhead passes on past the low intensity loop and into the high intensity loop. With low intensity setting, the playhead will loop within the low intensity loop region. We will be using markers for backwards progression Within segment one, there is no need to return back to the start of segment one, but say if the intensity value was to decrease after the playhead has progressed, we will find that the playhead moves back to the start of the low intensity segment. The same will happen if the playhead is within the high intensity loop. We will also be adding more variety to the higher intensity loop region with new musical elements. A new drum section which is only triggered if the health is low. Now we've got a lot to cover today so let's get started and stuck straight into it. The first step is to create a new parameter that drives the logic to move forwards and backwards between sections of music, depending on the progression of the player. In our simple game, we'll be using a game parameter called intensity that increases as the player moves through the level. Now we remember how to do this from last time. You press the big plus, press add parameter, name a parameter and set the range as well. We'll do the same as we did with the health parameter and set it between zero and 100. What we'll do is we'll also have a think about our initial value. So our default for this parameter will be zero because when the event is loaded and played, it will be when the level is loaded the first time. It is best to have a think and set this default value when you first create the parameter so you don't forget to do it later on. Since we're so excited about this new parameter, let's go straight in and create our new loop as well. So with a looping region, right click in the logic track and select add loop region. We are going to create this loop region between bar 21 and bar 37. We'll also create a marker for segment two straight away. So right click in the logic track again and select add marker. Double click to name your marker. Now with the loops set up as they are, the playhead will never move past the first loop. So what we can do is create some conditional logic to keep the playhead looping or to break out of the loop and move forwards throughout the piece. So we'll start with segment one. So select the loop region, hit your big plus down here in the deck area. Here you can add a parameter condition. What we'll do is we'll attach this logic operation to the intensity parameter. Let's set it for a low intensity, zero to 50. And we'll have a listen. As we can hear, the playhead will only stay and hold looping in this loop region 
when this intensity condition that we've set down here is met. If we were to turn up the intensity up over 50, we will notice that the playhead continues on and jumps into segment two. Now we can set up the same for segment two. Add a parameter condition for intensity and from 50 to 100 is fine. Now we have some logic that controls when the playhead loops and when it breaks out of the loop to move forwards. Let's create some logic that will move the playhead backwards along the timeline. To do this, we'll need to use transition markers. A transition marker is a special type of marker that moves the playhead between positions on the timeline. Each transition marker has conditional logic and a destination marker associated with it. So when the playhead hits a transition marker and the conditional logic is met, the playhead is moved to the destination marker. In our piece, we want to use these transition markers to move the playhead back to the start of the previous loops when the intensity parameter decreases. Let's set this up. At bar 40, we'll need a marker to segment one and a marker to the start of segment two. At bar 21, we'll need a marker to send the playhead back to just bar five, the start of segment one. So let's create these markers. Right click in the logic track and select add transition two and select segment one. We'll do the same for the transitions up here. Transition to segment one, add transition to segment two. But without any conditional logic actually attached to these markers, they will always transition. Even if we don't really want them to, this is because the probability down here is at 100%, it will always happen. Now, what we'll do is we'll apply some conditional logic. So to do this, you just select your transition marker. So this is the one that's going back to the start of segment one. Hit the big plus, just like we did before and select the parameter condition for intensity. For this one, we'll need it to be the same as the looping region. So just when the intensity is low between zero and 50, we want the playhead to skip back to segment one and start playing from there. Let's have a listen. So if the intensity is low, there you go. If the intensity is high, we'll notice that the playhead continues on past the end of the loop and then on past the marker as well. On past the transition marker as well. Now let's set up the logic for these two markers at the end of segment two. So we'll do the same thing. So for the transition to segment one, hit the big plus, add a parameter condition for intensity. Because it is going to segment one, we'll need the low intensity again, zero to 50. Select two segment two, and we'll add the parameter condition for intensity from 50 to 100, because this is going to the start of the high intensity. Now let's have a play around with this. Intensity is at 80, back to segment two. Low intensity. And it goes all the way back to segment one. Perfect. Next up, we're going to add the cherry on top of our higher intensity loop and add a few conditionally triggering musical elements, starting by adding a few more regions to our orchestra hits track. These we will keep simple with no trigger conditions to allow for some consistency in this one instrument, the orchestra hits track. So we'll just scroll down and find our orchestra hits track. We'll need to bring up the audio bin. We have a folder that we've sorted all of our orchestra hits into. Now we'll look for a couple of specific files. Drum sequence one, we will drag this and drop it straight to bar 17. We will then select drum loop one, two, and three all together, shift and select, drop them. And a multi-sound is created automatically for us. Drag them over to bar 21 and pull across to finish at 33. And then we'll throw in drum loop intermediate one, drag and drop. We can close the audio bin for now. We can have a listen to what these sound like. Very dramatic.
Now, if you notice, because we hit play straight away, we went straight into listening to what this new region sounded like, we forgot to do something very important. Now, I selected the multi-sound so I could show you the playlist for this multi-sound, which included the three assets that we selected from the audio bin. FMOD Studio automatically randomizes the playlist for you, so it never plays in the same sequence. But because we want these three different assets in the playlist to loop continuously during the duration of the whole multi-sound, we need to select this loop beam button. And then we will find that the multi-sound behaves as we wish it to. Perfect. So because our assets were shorter than the duration of the multi-sound, we needed to make sure that each of the assets would loop in the playlist. Now the last thing I want to do is create a new track for some additional drum hits and apply some conditional triggering logic to this new track to spice up the mix according to the player health. So what we'll do is we will select any track, right click on the track and select add audio track. This gives us a new audio track, of course. We can name it straight away so we don't forget what it is. Open up your audio bin again. We will need to open up our kick effects asset and drag and drop into the track. We will start this asset at bar 17. It sounds a little bit like this. They're sort of jaunty sort of drum hits. We want to attach some trigger behavior and we'll do that just by opening this panel down here in the deck. Again, we find our logic section, hit the big plus to add a parameter condition and we'll select health this time. We want these ominous drum hits to trigger only when the health is getting really low and the pressure is high. So let's set this down to 30 and below. Now we've got the health up at 100%. Let's see if this asset triggers. All right, let's turn the health right down to within the range that we've specified in the logic module. There we go. So we can see it metering even if we can't hear it because it's quite subtle. Perfect, exactly as I wanted it to be. Now, in any situation where we want to add some variety or randomness to the triggering of a region, we can do the same thing to apply some triggering logic driven by any of the parameters we're using in our event. This is actually all we have time for today. We have covered a few more techniques for creating non-linear and adaptive audio in FMOD Studio. We have covered the super flexible and important concept of using a parameter to control conditional logic and playhead movement in our adaptive music piece. We've also added conditionally triggering regions to ensure that our high intensity segment of music has an element that is responsive to the health parameter, as well as the structure being responsive to the overall intensity and progression that the player is through the level. In the next video, we will add to the structure of the piece again and implement a transition out to a new musical theme that will occur when the player dies. We will use transition regions to do this and we'll even experiment with crafting some content in the transition timelines. I'm super excited to show you these awesome features. From everyone on the FMOD team, thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next video.